We're here today not just to talk about the future of this company. We're here to talk about its destiny. We're here to talk about the end of the world. We stand on the brink of Armageddon, diseases for which we have no cure. Fundamentalist states who call for our destruction, nuclear powers over which we have no control. And even if we navigate these dangerous waters, we face other, even more inevitable threats. Global warming will melt the polarized gaps within 80 years, flooding 90% of all habitable areas on Earth. Unchecked population growth will overtake food production in less than 50 years, leading to famine and war. This is not conjecture. This is fact. One way or another, our world is coming to an end. Now the question is, will we end with it? I propose that we end the world, but on our terms. An orchestrated apocalypse. One that will cleanse the earth of its population, but leave its infrastructure and resources intact. It's been done once before with great success. The chosen few will ride out the storm, not in an ark as in the book of Genesis, but in safety underground. And when it's over, we will emerge onto a cleansed earth, one that we can then reboot in our image. The means of our salvation are already at hand. I give to you the T-Virus. A, B, N. It's headphones, Steel! guys and welcome back to my last review as of now for the Resident Evil film franchise. So I had a ch chance to finally watch the final chapter which is a film that came out um, in 2016 as far as rounding out the Resident Evil film franchise we learned that there's an antidote to the zombie apocalypse and the T-virus which is back in Raccoon City in the underground basement and all that um so as we learn in this film which I actually thought was a good touch is that the Red Queen AI is a young version of uh, um Alicia which is who Alice has been cloned on so I thought that was a particularly nice touch and they handled it this way um and then they deal with all the various clones of Ian Glenn's character who as it turns out is part of the old hierarchy that enabled um, all these clones to take place and all the various Ian Glenn's that were in uh, and trying to run um, Raccoon City were his clones. So I thought all in all the final chapter was actually a pretty good film and one of the better ones in the franchise. So for me as far as the best films to watch in the franchise I would say the first one obviously then the second to last one which I'm already um, drawing a blank on the name and then the final chapter mostly because um they deal with um all the clones and the various um interactions with all the characters the t-virus um the red queen and all of that so i would say watch resident evil then watch retribution and then the final chapter um as far as apocalypse and extinction and afterlife go they weren't bad films they just spread a lot of information or very little information out over three films so combining them into one film would have made for a better film and the reason i say that is because these films serve as mila jovovich's um opus as far as films go along the lines of the four films that were created in the alien franchise as far as sigourney weaver go so by the time you finish these films you realize that mila jovovich fits the role it worked out the revelation that the original alice was in cryo freeze with the rest of the um human hierarchy and that the t-virus act or the um, antidote that was developed for her did not actually work and it didn't last which explains the clones of her in the form of Alice so the three of them so the Red Queen Alicia and Alice going against Ian Glenn's character all generally work as the final showdown that 
Um, he needs to be stopped. He's crazy, and she that Alicia didn't authorize any of this. She's against it, and she has the true story of what happens. So the ends of the film create a closure for this particular franchise, and it leaves it open as far as future adventures that don't deal with this and kind of moving forward to the recovery and regrowth of humanity. Um, but of course it's going to be start, it's going to start with the, um, cl continuing cleansing and spreading of the T virus antidote. So all in all a good franchise and it's, the ending of the film continued to remind me of, um, Terminator 2 in the form of, um, uh, Linda Hamilton, Sarah Connor, um, as far as, um, all the stuff about hope and dreams and changing Judgment Day and all of that stuff at the end of Terminator 2. So while there were bumps along the way in the films, I feel like the series ended well enough on its own to be where they basically used properties that were already there in the form of Resident Evil, Raccoon City, um, the um, uh, Umbrella Corporation and all of that. As far as the actual characters in the film, like Ian Glenn and Mila Jovovich, uh, Michelle Rodriguez, Ali Larder, and all those people, I couldn't really tell you if they were true to form in the games, but in general, as far as the, these kinds of films go, their characters were um, good. I liked them. You cared about them. The interactions were nice. And I kind of wish that they had spent more time in the films, in those interactions, but not spend so much time spreading them out over so much time. So that's really all there is for this particular episode. So they, as I have mentioned in a couple of the past reviews, there is a new um, film in the works to come out in 2021 called Welcome to Raccoon City, which I don't see um, too much in the description as far as what it's gonna be about. Um, it looks like it, um, they're gonna have a bunch of new characters, so maybe, um, so even like, except for like Jill, who's gonna be played by someone else, Ada Wong is gonna be played by someone else, so I don't know what the purpose of the film is or if they're gonna take the f franchise in another direction. Um, Based on IMDb, it says it explores the secrets of the mysterious Spencer Mansion and the ill-fated Raccoon City, so potentially turn the franchise back to um, the more of the video game roots like they've been slowly doing over the past couple of movies, potentially, because they have, because um, the final chapter and um, uh, Retribution kind of did feel very um, video gamey, so it's potentially going to be a better of the films, but we shall see, especially since we've had um, Mila Jovovich in the role of Alice and then Ali Larder in her role. Um, the, I think the same lady in um, the role of. Um, well, it was, I think Ada Wong was only in one. Ki one film so I'm gonna kind of leave it open it does seem like they're gonna take it back to the roots of the video game franchise and potentially deal with that and include more of those elements so we shall see how that goes but that is all for this particular review so if you have any questions comments feedback uh, what you like didn't like um, if you played the video games and how the movies stack up against the video games and you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01 the website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And of course, um, if you support the show you can, on Patreon, you can get early access to content, bonus content, as one is coming up soon at patreon.com slash patelin01. But that's all there is for this particular review. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.